uh, I want to I want to share with you uh, the title would be why is sacred fire so strange to you now I'm not talking to you I'm talking to you and you but not you but why is sacred fire so strange to you and um, we're going to be in first Peter so if you have your Bible and you want to turn there but I always read the scriptures so feel free to do either one. Uh, First Peter chapter 1 and uh, verse 6 and 7. <clears throat> First Peter 1, 6 through 7. And you do have your little timing thing. It's all right. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth it perisheth though it be tried with fire might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ so peter's writing to these folks and and they're going through trials they're going through manifold temptations, um, they're going through depression over the, the things, the heaviness uh, over the things that they're experiencing. Um, but for God, these things aren't just trials. They are the trial of your faith. He's, you could say he has your faith on trial. Um, he's, he wants to he wants to see a certain producing of uh, a certain thing. And so the, the faith is the most important thing here and not the trials as far as God's concerned. Uh, he says, though, if need be for a while, he's gonna, God's going to put you through this. And um, so what kind of faith? Well, he's talking about lamb faith. He's talking about Galatians 2.20. He's talking about that Paul lived by the faith of the Son of God who loves by giving himself this God and it's his faith lives by the faith of the Son of God and so God's testing that faith in us and he's testing it in in trials and in in the fire if you will um, and um, the trials are the fire they are the fire that's meant to light up the offering. And that offering is Christ crucified within us. That's what the trials are. They're meant to light up the offering where Christ crucified gives himself through us in those circumstances, in those situations. Now that's an important statement, and you may want to go back and re-listen to this <laughs> because it has a lot in it. Uh, the trials. Um, <clears throat> so what? So what we're saying then is, what is the fire? What What is that fire? What does it represent? What does it have to do? Well, in, in Jesus's situation, there was no real fire, and yet he was the true fulfillment of the offering. Think of that. Think of that. There was no real fire. What was the trial? Well, I mean the fire. The fire was the circumstances and the, the mistreatment and the false accusations and uh, all of the things that, that we go through. All of the, the, the pressures and the things that can bring depression and stuff like that to us. <clears throat> so um, they are these unjust circumstances. And I wrote down, from the fire, the Father gets his given son. Or does he? That the trial of your faith would be more precious to him than gold. Than the most precious thing on earth. This, this what we could give him of the son the given son, Christ crucified in those situations, is more precious. All right, so let's go to, we're still in First Peter, and we'll be there pretty much most of the scriptures. Let's go to chapter 2 and verse 19. For 
This is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when you are buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and you suffer for it and you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were we called. This is what we're called to. Why? Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. Who did no sin, he didn't do anything wrong, neither was there any guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. So, Verse 19 is the fire, for this is thankworthy if a man toward, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. There's the fire, just like Jesus, just like the fire that was the, that was the altar, uh, that he died on was all of this that happened to him. And he's using him as an example. And then verse 20, the first part is, um, that, uh, for what glory is it when you are buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently. This is an unwilling sacrifice who rejects the fire and the altar and just makes it circumstances that are troubling their life. And they don't want to suffer for, for doing well. Okay. And then uh, the end of verse 20, the lamb is the acceptable sacrifice. Uh, but if when you do well and you suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Verse 21, called to Christ crucified. And that's for even here and to where you call, because Christ also suffered, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. That we are called to Christ crucified, not just to Christ justified or resurrected, however you want to put it. We're not called to Christ justified. I know we all want to be justified. And we want to prove the people that they're bad. And we want, to, we want to tell them off. And we want to do all that stuff. But we're not called to that. And we're not called to Jesus above right now. We're called to Christ crucified. That's what this is declaring unto us. And then verse 22 and 23. Who did no sin. Who did no sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth. But when he was reviled and... And so and so. So the so I wrote down the fire was upon him, but he responded not as a crisis, but as an altar unto God. The fire. See, it's the same fire that Jesus went through. We it's lesser to a lesser degree for us, but it's the same fire that Jesus went through, and it's the true fire that God always had in mind when in the Old Testament. He set up altars, and he rained down fire on sacrifices and all that kind of stuff. This is the true fire. This is the fulfillment of it. This is the meaning. If you want to know the meaning of altar and fire and everything, this is it. And he's telling us that's what Jesus went through, and he did that as an example so that we also would be with him in that spirit as he went through it. And that's what he's talking about, this lamb spirit. Um, so... You know, I was thinking about how we just miss that. We miss the, the, we just call it circumstances or trials or stuff. And we wrestle with it. Oh, God, take it away and get rid of all this stuff and everything. And I'm thinking about Abraham and him and Isaac when they're going up to the altar. And they're, he's, Isaac's going to be offered. And, and Isaac looks at his father and he says, Father, here is the, here's the wood and here's the fire. But where's the lamb? And we had the fire that we're going through, and God's son is still asking, where is the lamb? Here's the fire. I'm in the middle of the trial. But when is the lamb going to come out of me in this? First Peter now in chapter 3. He continues because this is the theme of First Peter. First Peter 3, verse 9 and 10. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing 
that ye are there unto call. He's repeating this in the next chapter from where we just came, chapter 2, that you should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Okay, so what is the fire? The fire is the evil and the railing that's happening to them. That's the fire. That's the circumstances that they're in. The call, he says right here, you're called to a lamb lifestyle. You're called to this. Um, and But we're not just called to doing what the lamb would do. We're called to the lamb nature. That's what we're called to. We're called to the lamb and the oneness of him, in him, by him, for him, to him. Be glory forever and ever. Amen. So, verse 10, then, for uh, he says, Let him refrain his tongue from evil and the lips that speak no guile. Your, your mouth betrays the nature that you really have, your true nature. The, what, what is the opposite of going through trials that we didn't, we didn't de deserve? We are falsely accused, which is what chapter 2 is talking about. Um, the other response is to use your mouth to put down people, to, 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 to talk to others and tell how bad they are and what they've done to me and what they all this kind of stuff and to have guile in your mouth about them. This is saying, let him refrain his tongue from evil. And his lip. This isn't talking about cussing or something like that. This is talking about in the fire, not being a lamb. And then rebelling against sacred fire. And then still in chapter 3, 1 Peter 3, 17 and 18. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing, than for evil doing, for Christ, always pointing to Christ crucified, for Christ also hath suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So, I wrote down, it, su it suggests suffering for well doing. The scripture is suggesting suffering for doing good. Who ever heard of such a thing? The good shouldn't suffer, right? The lamb does. The lamb suffers for well-doing, for the things that he's done right. Um, so the fire in this scripture is the suffering that comes when you didn't do anything wrong. When you didn't do anything wrong, okay? This is the altar fire, not, and it's, this is the, the real fire, the true altar fire. And it is not just circumstances out of control. Now, we can see it either way. And that was why I said, why do you, you know, I forget the exact title. How, why is sacred fire so strange to you? Um, uh, so it suggest, this scripture is suggesting suffering for well-doing. Um, this altar fire is not just circumstances. So why would we suffer this way? Why would we go through? Why would we, life is hard enough without going without uh, suffering for doing good? We would do it because the scripture says in verse eighteen, "For Christ also suffered when he didn't do anything wrong, never sinned, never did anything wrong, and never had any guile in his mouth either." Um, so, this is God's means of bringing those evil people to God. This is Jesus' means for bringing those people to God, uh, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. What's the alternative again? Not bringing them to God, cursing them, talking about them and how they failed and all the stuff that they've done wrong. But where's the... Where's the altar? Where's the, you know, I mean, where's the, where's the sacrifice? Where's the lamb? I'm in the fire. And God's saying, well, where's the lamb? And then in chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 12 and 13, <clears throat> Beloved, think it not strange concerning 
the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. This is what this was his great suffering, not because he did anything wrong, but because he was accused falsely, and he he didn't he was he didn't do anything wrong there. And when he got accused, he didn't do anything wrong either. Neither was there guile found in his mouth. I wrote a little quick translation my own beloved think it not strange concerning the sacred fire which is to cleanse you as though some strange thing happened unto you this is this is a test it's supposed to burn off the dross and and our faith to him is like pure gold that rises pure gold that rises up and so so there is this this there's peter's having to write this after the first chapter, which we looked at, and we saw that this was the theme, and the second chapter, and the third chapter, and the fourth chapter, and at the end of the fourth chapter, this is what he says. Look, beloved, I'm trying to explain to you why the stuff you're going through isn't just stuff. It's not the devil run rampant. That this is the altar, and or the fire, and Lay down on the altar and let Christ rise to the Father. Let the sweet savor of Christ rise up. Because many of the scriptures that we just read, it was always talking about that God would be glorified. Not us, but God would be glorified. And so, um, a scripture off from that is 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians 3, 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. I mean, I got goosebumps, because that is so incredibly powerful to realize that the, the, the judgment in a certain sense is being set up by us, not because we're sinning, but because we're violating the lamb when, because, of, because this is an unjust situation. I, I serve the Jesus of justice who rose above his enemies. No, no, that's not what you're called to. It's not what I'm called to. <laughs> And I'm going to be with the Lord. And I know you are too. And I know that we all want this. But you can't do that by knowing the truth. You do that by knowing Christ as the truth. And as the fulfillment of all of this. This is just, and every man's work shall be made manifest. In other words, everything is going to come to light. Regardless of what we say we believe. Regardless of what we, we teach or we, we handle as, as far as the word of God. It's going to, what really is there is going to be made manifest by the fire. The fire that we face every day or, you know, throughout our life. And the day shall declare. What day shall? Well, for sure the day that we're in the fire and the response that we have, because it's talking about a manifestation of what's in us. So the day that we're in that trial, it's either a trial uh that is brought on by the world, the flesh, or the devil, or it is a, it is God trying our faith to see of what sort it is, what, what's the nature of our faith. Because it shall be revealed by fire. Now, you tell me any other place that that could be possible. I mean, when you die, you don't go through fire. When you get up to heaven, you don't, there's not fire all around that reveals this. This is revealed in the fires of, of everyday life and the same fires that Jesus experienced. Now, well, let me finish this last part. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. The fire, the fire is the big divider. Um, three Hebrew children thrown in the fire. 
Jesus shows up. One like the Son of God. One like the Son of God was in there with them. Um, that rises to the Father. The Father gets his given Son. Uh, it's a glorious thing. Well, someone else, and I'm sure there were plenty of people thrown in the fire before, and they just died. And they might have cursed the, the people throwing them in the fire for, for throwing them in there. But to God, that's sacred fire or it's strange fire. I don't want to get into, because I'm, I'm crossing over some in relationship to what I'm teaching on Thursday nights about the prodigal son. But Nadab and Abihu died because of strange fire because they didn't understand the fire. Strange fire. They died of strange fire. Think it not strange about the fire that is meant to bring forth the gold, which is God, which is Christ, which is the fullness of this, of the nature. And that's manifested. The fullness of the nature of God is manifested by that fire. And if, if there'd never been a cross... You and me would never have known God as the Lamb. We'd have known Him as the healer or the king or the this or that or everything else. We'd never known Him as He is. We'd only known Him as He does. So, when we get in the fire, when we get into the, those circumstances, and the uh, you look around, you said, here's, here's the fire, Father. <laughs> here's the wood. But where's the lamb? The Father go. that's what I'm asking. Where is the lamb? I'd like to see him come out of you in this situation. And he did lay down on that altar. And then God provided himself a lamb. But he had to accept that spirit. The father had already done that. Abraham had already done that and said, went three days and took him up there, laid him on the altar. The death had already taken place in his heart. It says that in Hebrews. And the son had already done that because he laid down. But when it's all come true, it's really just the lamb himself in us and none other. Not us, but Christ. I am crucified with Christ, yet not I. And that crucifixion was by and to and through Him. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you for uh, the, the reality that Jesus, the, the fire, the, after all of the years and centuries of, um, and millennia almost, of of all of the sacrifices that were going on, and every one of them required fire, that when Jesus came, there was no fire, except the fire of circumstances. And then Peter, one of the twelve that Jesus chose, Father, declares unto us, this is the true fire, and this is where we're supposed to make it an altar. And not just a mistreatment, a maltreatment by people. Father, help us to not think uh, it's strange concerning this fire. As though some strange thing has happened to us. But help us to be so in tune with the life and nature of your Son. And help us be so in tune with the desire of your heart as a father desiring this son, not the resurrected son, not the, not the justified son that can gloat over the people who did this to him and point to him and say you were wrong, but the son, the one who went through all of that, that's what you're, he did this as an example for us, that we might walk in these same steps. What steps? Christ crucified. Help it become not teaching, not theology, not our belief system. But the very heart and soul of our being as we go together through this life by Christ crucified. 
For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. Love your whole bunch. Thank you for allowing me to share.